truth hurts, the truth hurts, so you about to feel pain, and I gotta do her, God said I gotta do her, cause it's off with the name, Savage Truth, Savage Truth, it's the Savage Truth, the Savage Truth. Welcome back to the Savage Truth Network. I am your host, Roy Dockery. And yes, it's time for another Leadership Lab exercise and session <laughs> think tank, you know, whatever, workshop. And we're going to talk about serving today. And the reason that serving is important is because you have, as a leader, one of the things that you want to make sure that you're exemplifying is the fact that you have the heart of a servant, right? Because no, like it, people will follow people for a lot of reasons, but what you, you know, when we talk about leading by example, like if you expect people to be servants, then that, you know, it, it, this common sense would have that you should be seen serving, right? So you have to put yourself in positions to be a servant so that you broaden your understanding and your impact as a leader. And I'm not just talking about serving your own interest. See, the interesting thing about being a leader is that you want to influence and have a positive impact on people, regardless of whether or not you get a benefit from that impact, right? So you want to be a good example and you want to be a, a leader who exemplifies good qualities, whether it's to your employees, someone else's employees, whether you're in your community, whether you're um, whether at your church, whether in your social organizations, your children's school, it doesn't matter. You want to be good. You want to be seen as a leader because we all have the ability to influence people. So if you're going to influence people, why not influencing them, influence them using all of the characteristics we talked about, authenticity, honesty, love, right? And then service. So just some very basic examples, like regardless of where you are within the organization, if you see someone who needs a hand, help them. I know this sounds like a very basic thing, but you'd be surprised how shocked people are that like, as a vice president, I will open a door for them. That as a vice president, I will help them carry a package. And I'm not doing that because I'm a vice president. I'm doing that because I think it's kind as a person to serve other people. If I'm watching someone, you know, a foot shorter than me struggle trying to get a suitcase in the overhead, or if I'm watching somebody struggle trying to carry two items, or if I can open the door and help somebody across a threshold, to be seen serving is, is, is to be seen a little bit more human, right? Like a lot of times executives, we get seen as kind of like these robotic, like, it's kind of weird, right? Like the, like the men behind the curtain or the women behind the curtain. I'm not, like I'm just a regular person. I, I always joke, like I poop like everybody else, right? Like Pete Holmes is like, if you want to if you want to like um, remove the fear of engaging with anybody, just imagine that everybody poops, right? Like, like, but I wake up every day, like there's nothing special about me. Like I just have a responsibility and then I try to live my life in a way to have a positive impact on people. My great grandmother did the same thing and she never had a title of a vice president. My grandmother did the same thing. She never had the title of a vice president. There are people in my church who do the same thing. They don't have the title of vice presidents. We're just servants, right? And I'm just a servant who happens to be in a position to lead, but people will see your heart um, and it will humanize you a bit when you serve and serve authentically, right? Don't don't just try to be, you know, the, the person that's always, but like when you see somebody that needs a hand, lend it, right? And sometimes it's a matter of lending your expertise to other people, right? I don't have a problem developing and mentoring people who don't work for me. I don't have a problem speaking about leadership to another organization. I don't have an issue helping somebody else develop a process. I don't I don't have an issue doing something as basic as like video editing for a company project or recording some videos um, or, or helping edit video or do time studies because I want to serve, right? Like if I go out in the field to visit my technicians, like I'm going to serve them. Like how can I help you? I'm not just here to stand over your shoulder in the look. I'm here to serve you. That's the main reason I ask my people, hey, provide me feedback, um, ask me questions. I have, you know, we have an open door policy. I've always had an open door policy in leadership because I want to know how to best serve the people who are under my responsibility, right? Who are who are under the umbrella of my protection and my leadership. Like, how can I serve you? And sometimes serving you is telling you to take the day off. Sometimes serving you is saying that I'm praying for you and your family with the things that you're going through. Sometimes serving them is just being an ear and letting them vent about their frustrations that have nothing to do with work, 
but have to do with life and family or, or medical issues. Sometimes serving them is taking things off of their plate because you know they're too susceptible to saying yes and they don't like saying no. So they're going to do more than they should. They're going to do more than what's healthy, right? Sometimes serving people is telling them to take the day off, is taking some work, you know, taking um, taking a day and saying, hey, you know, go enjoy. It's It's recognizing them. It's giving them a gift card. It's giving them public acknowledgement. I love the fact that my, my current company, they do something called kudos in Slack where it's public and you can just give give somebody a shout out for what they did um, and just thank people, right, for serving, for serving you, first of all, right? Appreciate people for serving you, but look for opportunities to genuinely serve others, right? Be somebody who champions um, volunteering, right? Be somebody who champions a cause that doesn't directly connect to you. If you have an employee who has a child with a disability, if you have an employee who's connected to like a breast cancer walk or a lupus walk or something like that, make sure you are the person that's rallying the troops. Make sure you're the person that's championing their causes because in that you're serving them and you're serving them in something that doesn't benefit you, right? The main thing about having a servant heart as a leader, it's not just quid pro quo. It's a quid, quid pro quo right? It's not that I help you so you can help me. It's like, I help you because I love you and I care about you. And if I'm your leader, I want you to do well. So I'm going to help you even if you can do nothing for me, right? So even if it's establishing volunteer programs, if it's establishing service initiatives, if it's, you know, establishing ways for us to help each other, to celebrate each other, right? Identifying people's birthdays, identifying work anniversaries, finding out ways that we can serve people, that we can contribute to other people's success. And it's actually more impactful when you do it outside of your organization. Everybody expects you to do everything for your group because your group is going, you know, everything that your group does ultimately rolls up to you, right? So it's a, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a self-fulfilling thing. Like, okay, I help my team be better, which ultimately improves my team, which then makes me look better. So then the key as a leader is how many ways can you find to serve something that's not tied to you at all? How can you find a way to serve the people in administration? How can you find a way to serve the office manager? How can you find a way to serve the marketing department? How can you find a way to serve engineering? How can you find a way to serve finance? Like, how can you find a way to serve the people team? Like, what can you do in your role, in your responsibility, with your power, with your influence to actually serve other people? Right. One thing that I normally do as a leader is that once I get to know people within the organization, once I get to know their quirks and their behaviors and their personalities, and I see other people having a difficulty communicating with them, right? You got that difficult person in engineering that people don't really know how to talk to. What I do is I figure out how to talk to that person. I learn their quirks. I understand what their what their interests are, right? Because I invest that time to know them. And then I teach other people how to talk to that person in engineering so that we get better collaboration and better teamwork, right? Like I, I go and figure out the terminology and the goals and the objectives of the sales team so that I can come back to the operations folk and let them know like, yeah, I know they seem pushy, but this is really what they're trying to do. In that, I'm serving the sales team, right? I'm serving the project management team. I'm serving the engineering team because it's a choice, right? You can choose to improve the situation around you. You can choose to be a leader that has a positive influence or you can choose to be somebody that builds silos, builds walls, burns bridges, and creates tension between groups, right? But good leaders don't create tension. Good leaders create clarity, right? Good leaders create collaboration, and that's what we should be uh, that's what we should be driven to do daily, and we should in, be intentional about doing it in spaces that don't primarily benefit us, in spaces that aren't specifically under our control because we want the communities that we're a part of to be successful. So as a leader, I want to see the benefit. I want to see the impact, right? I want to make an impression on the entire community. And then I want to be able to leave that imprint. So that's what we've got to do when it comes to serving. We have to be intentional about it. We've got to keep our minds focused and set on making sure we're not just serving our own interests, but that we're doing things as leaders that mutually benefit those that are in our community, um, whether we get to see the rewards from that or not. So be a servant lead by example, generate service projects, help those that are around you, always lend a hand, be available. Be available as a leader to help other people help themselves, even if you get no benefit from it. So thank you for joining us for another Leadership Lab. Next, we're going to talk about giving credit.
but always taking responsibility. God bless y'all. Peace out. Somebody pray for me, whether I seem like I'm well or I'm